Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk reportedly potentially uh, almost traded to the Jaguars in a in a trade that looks like if this is even true. There's a lot of people reporting on it. We don't know what's smoke right now, what isn't. It's smoke season. Uh, but we are here to discuss things when they're out there in the ether. And this one is. Whether anybody believes it to be true or not. The Niners reportedly would have wanted the number 17 overall. And Zay Jones, and I'll, I'll show you right now what that looks like. The Jaguars have the number 17 overall pick. And I discussed this earlier in the month, I believe. Uh, right around March something, March 1, March 2, somewhere around there. That there was some rumblings about IU potentially, you know, being kicked around. And the thinking is by Niner fan bases, there's no way he's getting traded. There's absolutely no way he could be traded. And I, I get that, but the problem is their contract negotiations are, are, are reportedly re really far apart. And when a player is very unhappy and they're going to create waves, they don't necessarily want to be in that situation if they don't feel like the team... Uh, uh, values them the way that they want to be valued. Calvin Ridley gets a four-year, $92 million, $50 million guaranteed deal. And, and something like that ends up... Uh, we, we got this as well, Tank Dell. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, it, you know, uh, the animosity can build. IU could definitely be unhappy. And when he was asked, are you going to be in San Francisco in 2024, at his locker room, in the locker room, the man said, uh, if it's the right thing i think is what the the verbiage was it was something along the lines of if it's the right move or if it's the right thing i'll be here he didn't say yes he didn't say it'd get worked out he clearly wants a contract that is probably above ridley's and we don't know if the niners are even close to that number my guess is they're not my guess is this niner way of waiting to extend a player in August, in letting all these contracts pile up one after the other and set the market, reset the market, reset the market, and then a receiver like Ayuk, who may have settled for $89 million, 42 guaranteed on a four-year deal, now looks at Ridley's $92 million, 50 guaranteed million dollars on a four-year deal and says, I need way more than $23 million a year now because Ridley's getting $23 million a year. Um, that can create waves. And as I've said, I stand by what I said about a half a month to a month ago. I don't even know. Time flies. I have no idea. what. I barely know what day of the week it is. Every day runs into the next. I don't know when I said it, but it's been weeks that I've been saying it. Ayuk is going to request a trade. And, and the reason he's going to request a trade is we're hearing both sides are very far apart. Okay, so that's, that's point one. Point two is that his leverage point whether he, he's going to get traded or not, Niner fans need to understand requesting a trade and getting traded are, are, are two very different things. It's leverage. Doesn't mean that they won't get traded. The leverage could turn in, into something like Tyreek Hill's situation. Tyreek Hill got a call from his agent. His agent said, hey, Tyreek, request a trade. We're going to request a trade. Tyreek said, we are. I don't want to go anywhere. It'll be our leverage point. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Do whatever you, you got to do, boss. Okay. He then requests a trade. It opened a door. Before you know it, a door got opened. Pandora's box got opened. You couldn't put Pandora back in. And Tyreek Hill was shipped off. And that's the way these things go. I'm not saying he will get traded, but he will request a trade if they're not on the same page. And as of right now, as of this current moment in time, the Niners and Ayuk are very, very far apart according to numerous reports. So the next step, you would say is if they're far apart where's your leverage point the nfl draft what happens if these teams fill their wide receiver rooms like the jaguars with with a trade which you know they have or, or, or a signing which they have or a, a rookie pick another rookie if if let's say the denver broncos draft roma dunze i hope they do not where's wood knock on wood then the Denver Broncos are not going to be trade candidates for Brandon Ayuk after the NFL draft. If the, uh, call it the, the, I don't know, Dallas Cowboys could be in, you know, for a wide receiver, could, could make a splash for a player. Even though a lot of people say they don't want to spend. I think 
Jerry Jones doesn't want to spend, but for the right player, he might. For the right, I don't know, selling tickets, um, getting a, a big name in. Could he be somebody that would trade the 24 overall pick for Brandon Ayuk? I, I believe he would. I believe he'd be very, very interested in something like that. And and could that happen? Could. Will it? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. But Ayuk and his agent are going to say, Dallas is going to draft a receiver. Dallas is going to address the position in the draft. By the time the draft is done, Dallas will no longer be interested in Brandon Ayuk, as will Denver, as will all these other landing spots. And I'm not necessarily calling those two landing spots out, Jaguars. Wide receiver rooms get filled. Wide receiver rooms get buttoned up. The NFL draft is that tipping point of leverage. So he will ask for a trade if, in fact, the Niners and him are very, very far apart. And, in fact, if the Niners are going to say, we'll talk to you at, after the draft, his agent's going to say no. We're breaking down that and a whole bunch of more stories. Tank Dell. We got Tank Dell news. Uh, we got Tyler Huntley, Joshua Dobbs. 49ers forfeit a fifth round pick because of Maggie in accounting. Maggie in accounting messed up the accounting and the NFL's cracking down on the 49ers and they're making them forfeit a fifth round pick in 2025 and more. We'll break it down right now. The fantasy football show begins now. From the fantasyfootballshow.com studios. It's the fantasy football show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. Here we are, here we are. Appreciate every single one of you. Hit that thumb up button on the way in the door. Appreciate every single one of you. And if you're new to the show, we go live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Every single Monday through Friday. Rain or shine, Christmas Eve, doesn't matter. We're here. I'm here for you. This is a 365 operation here at the Fantasy Football Show. And not only am I live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m., I'm live whenever big news breaks. I, f I fire the studio up. I put a bathrobe on if I need to, to get decent. I come in here, I fire up the lights, and I go live. Uh, rain or shine, day or night, this is your breaking news uh, analysis show. So please subscribe if you're new. I just saw three people subscribe right now uh, and, and appreciate you doing that. Let me see if I can get these uh, notifications to go off. I don't know what's going on with my... My, uh, I gotta like hit this button here, see if I can reset it. Hopefully, every time we get a subscriber, every time we get a super chat, we'll see it pop off in here. Um, I, you, let, let me just say this again for anybody that's just joining us. This is a rumor, there's no concrete confirmed 49er, uh, you know, confirmation here. 49ers reportedly would have sent in this trade that, that fell through the 17 overall and Zay Jones to the Niners, the Jaguars. Um, would have uh, would have gotten Ayuk. So fizzling out, and the word is that is too high a price tag for the Jaguars. They don't want to give up the 17 and Zay Jones. I don't know that Zay Jones should be stepping on this trade, but this is what's being reported. I'm just here to tell you what the the report is, and it's a massive number of people reporting on it now. Reminding you that sometimes one source one source creates a trigger effect where all of the beat writers all of the team pages everybody starts playing the telephone game where they say you know uh he is going to do this and and on monday he'll do this and then on tuesday and then by the time it comes back around it's like it, it's a completely different story and it's a completely different person <laughs> it's a completely different trade uh, package it might even be that, that the trade wasn't even it was all made up from the beginning we don't know we have no idea. All we know is multiple people are reporting on this, so I'm here to digest it, break it down, dissect it, and I have no reason to believe it that it's false, but I have no reason to tell you I believe it to be 100% true. It's just smoke season. And this is far enough in the 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 purview. It's 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 absolutely out there to an extreme degree. We're here to talk about. It. I don't care if anybody goes this is fake news, smoke, why would you report on this? It is out there, so enough with that, Bob. Understand what the show is, or, or you don't need to necessarily watch. Okay, no one's forcing you. Hopefully, this tweet will stop all the random Niner fans 
who have Facebook friend request IG DM'd me in the last four days, says this individual. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but all we know is that uh, the Niners and the Jaguars potentially could have talked and it fell through. Um, more Niner-related news. And, and, and real quickly before I end on the Ayuk stuff, at any moment, he could be he could be traded or at any moment the Niners could say we are not trading Ayuk and then it's all put to bed you know if they come out and say adamantly we are not trading Brandon Ayuk he'll either play on the offer we give him or on the current contract if he decides not to accept it or he doesn't but he's not getting traded if that news comes out then everybody can relax about it but until we hear that these, these rumors have legs as far as you want to believe them, and that's it. We have no confirmation. We'll never get confirmation unless the Niners come out and shoot everything down. So as of right now, so he's staying, says uh, uh, Rich, for now. But, but just because you don't want a trade to happen doesn't mean it won't, Rich, is what I think you should come to terms with. Because Ayuk's unhappy. The Niners aren't going to probably pay him what he wants. He's going to request a trade. He has to do it before the NFL draft or all of his leverage goes out the window. And we'll see what happens from there. If they're far apart, if they're this far apart, Ayuk's going to put up a stink. Will Debo get traded? It's possible. More mileage? Will I, is Ayuk more valuable to trade? Probably more than Debo. Uh, this is a good signing while we're on the Niner topic. The Niners, they, they're busy today. There's a lot of Niner news today. Um... Dobbs, Joshua Dobbs, excellent backup to bring in. I, this is an amazing move. The Cardinals should have did this. Oh, wait, the Cardinals traded him away. <laughs> the Cardinals decided to bring in Ritter. The Cardinals, instead of signing Joshua Dobbs back without giving up draft capital, they decided to trade Rondell Moore for Ritter and catch the Ritter, which sounds like the next big thing. I don't know what to tell you other than this is a mistake for the Cardinals to to bring in Ritter. This is a great move by the Niners. I like Joshua Dobbs a lot. He's not a starting quarterback in the National Football League, but this is a Gardner Minshew type that could go in and win two or three games and play pretty good football if called upon. That's what Joshua Dobbs is. So totally Smitty approved this move by the Niners. And, and people say I'm biased that I can't, give the Niners credit when they make a good move. This is a good move. This is an excellent move. Texans swarm. Uh, appreciate you. Let's go. Uh, Texans, uh, bro, I can't wait. I can't wait. Texans are going to be off the hook this year, bro. It's going to get good. And, and the Tank Dell news comes in a second, so hang tight. We already broke it down on a separate video, but we're going to talk more about it in detail and talk about Tank Dell's upside, what he, what he could do, what ceiling value, all that. But but Dobbs is a great signing. Then, then this news right here, uh, Niners have just been busy, busy bees today. Uh, this one's a horrible, uh, a horrible situation. Joshua Dobbs, good. This one bad. Niners forfeit their 2025 uh, draft pick in the fifth round due to an accounting error. Maggie and accounting apparently didn't carry the one, and and and, and, I, and I'm payroll, and so. Someone might say this is not a big deal. It is. There's there's a lot of spending that's that's calculated. Teams cannot have any sort of advantage whatsoever, even if it's in the in the in the training room. You know what I mean? Everything needs to be accounted for. Maggie did not carry the one. So Maggie from accounting, Bob's wife, who works uh, in the same field, Maggie from accounting screwed this up, and uh, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, Smitty, I just got here. The title got me. I see nothing on the Niners news about Ayuk. I just broke it down, so rewind, bro. Rewind. I appreciate you being here, though, but rewind it. I, I'm not going to redo the whole show for you, pal. Like, that, that's what the, the back button's for. Hit hit 10 seconds back. Hit 10 seconds. Keep doing it until you see me talk about it. I break it down in tremendous detail for you, bro. Appreciate you, though. Uh, 49ers forfeit this, this 25 fifth rounder. They also have to move their fourth rounder to the back of the draft behind the uh, compensation picks or whatever. And it, it only ends up being like four or five or six picks, though, because they're already, I think, at 31. So, um, yeah, Maggie screwed the pooch on this one. Maggie's probably looking for a new job. Maggie from accounting, get her out of here. Okay, get her out of here. She's, she doesn't know how to do the math. So she is is dunzo, I, I imagine. Absolute dunzo. 
Okay, uh, let's go over to uh, and, and and Nolan. When you get back, Nolan, we'll be waiting here for you. But go rewind, pal. Tank Dell. Can can we just for a moment drop the Tank Dell emoji? If you don't have a green name in the chat, what are you doing? Number one, okay. Number one, what are you doing? All you got to do to get a, a green name is if you go to the YouTube channel. And you'll see memberships or the join button. This is a join button. This is the membership button. This is the desktop uh, view of it. Either one of those will bring it to memberships. On mobile, if you don't see the join button, you just click memberships. And anybody that has a membership can drop a Tank Dell emoji right now. And I want nothing but Tank Dell emojis for the next 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Just rain down Tank Dell. Because we got news today that this man is faster than ever, doesn't miss a beat, and is way ahead of schedule, and the new uniforms got leaked on top of it, Tank Dell season is not just coming again, but it's coming strong with the thunder, and every one of you should be thankful that Tank Dell's coming down, coming home, busting loose, dropping loads in 2024, and it all begins right now. I'm tankful. Everybody. You should be tankful. We're all tankful. Tank Dell. Yeah. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, buddy. That's right. Look at this man. Look at this man. According to this report, this is a KPRC two Houston report, right? But but there's so many of them. It's not just one. 10 times faster. It's in the it's in the verbiage up here. Hasn't lost a beat. Way ahead of schedule. Monster. And, 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 and proof of it is that everybody in the chat is still dropping Tank Dell emojis. I'm tankful. I'm tankful. You're tankful. We're all tankful for Tank Dell. Monster. Tyler Huntley, Browns, uh, agree to terms with Tyler Huntley, formerly of the Ravens. Let me let me just tell you something. As much as I rip on the Ravens, as much as the other day we said they need to find their Brock Purdy because Deshaun Watson is not it. He's not it. I don't care what anybody says. He's lost it. He, he did have it at one point. He was a top five quarterback in the making in Houston. He was. He was. But like Josh Gordon, he was a top five wide receiver in the making, but he couldn't make it happen after a certain amount of time, a certain absence, a certain mindset he couldn't get you know, through or whatever. Watson, biggest waste of a contract, worst trade and worst contract, especially in unison, in NFL history. And it's a shame because of how good this Cleveland Brown team is that did get knocked off by the Texans. The defense is amazing. The team is pretty solid. From top to bottom. Probably, as I said earlier, probably one of the best teams that doesn't have a good quarterback from top to bottom, like the Falcons. One of the best teams in the league from top to bottom that doesn't have a quarterback. The the the, the Browns are the same way. But what the Browns are doing, can I just say, is pretty crafty. Are they not doing exactly, in a sense, what we said they needed to do? I'm not saying Jameis Winston is great. I'm not saying Tyler Huntley is great. I'm not saying that uh, that uh, DTR is for sure the guy, but there are three players that can save the day potentially, and out of one of those three, they might be okay. They're not winning a Super Bowl necessarily, but they might get exactly where they got last year, which is pretty pretty damn good when you consider what they're committed to with the Deshaun Watson deal. So I'll just say this. I don't think the Browns can win the Super Bowl. They can't unless Deshaun Watson proves me wrong, which could he? Sure. Is it likely? Not really. But Tyler Huntley, Jameis Winston, and DTR are three pretty darn good backups. And should I say that the Jets should be taking notes? The New York Jets should be having the same conversations and w making the same moves. Why don't the New York football Jets have Tyler Huntley and Winston? Why don't the New York Jets have Tyler Huntley and DTR? Why don't the New York Jets have Malik Cunningham, who's cut over and over and over last year by the New England Patriots, and a, and a Huntley? Why can't the New York Jets do that? Maybe the New York Jets do what I say they should do at this number 10 pick and take Penix Jr. or Bo Nix and say, look, we're going to wait on you. 
Okay, Aaron Rodgers' time is now, but we don't want to miss out on the value that we could get out of those guys. And we'll take you. We'll take you. We'll do it live. We'll stash you, whatever the case may be. And we can still win a Super Bowl. If, if Aaron Rodgers went down midseason and tore his other Achilles, then Penix Jr. steps in and they blow up. Mick, uh, Nick steps in and they blow up. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, great job. Hats off. Smitty approved to the Browns. I rarely, Smitty approve a quarterback situation in Cleveland, but this is pretty decent, you know, maneuvering. You've just been Smitty approved. Tank Dell, Tank Dell. Yeah. You gotta love it. You got, you just gotta love it back there. Um, look at this guy. Decide, we, we th there, there we thought he was going to take the number eight. Um, him and Kyle Pitts had a conversation. And uh, F Flacco. First of all, I'll give you the, the Flacco. I'm sorry. I, I, just, called, I just called him Flacco. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I don't know why you reminded me of Flacco right there. You just did. Um, he's not Flacco. He's very, very brilliant. This guy is, is the best thing that the Falcons have seen in a while. Do I wish Fields were there? To be honest with you, yes. I'm I, 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 a small part of me wants Fields in Atlanta over Kirk Cousins, but I can't change anything. So I'm fully on board this. I'm 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 abs absolutely flabbergasted that that it, that that it actually happened. I'm I'm kind of in shock that we actually no longer have to worry about the the QB room in Atlanta. I'm actually very very I'm an eager beaver is what I am. You're looking at an eager beaver. Somebody ready to get to work on drafting. And on Underdog Fantasy, we're doing it pretty much every single night, okay? Come, going forward uh, here in the next week or two, we start. It's draft, 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 draft. Underdog Fantasy, promo code SMITTY. Doubling your first deposit up to $100. Link is in the description of every video. Link is right there in the live chat. I just dropped it right now. And uh, and, and essentially, I'm an eager beaver to get out there and draft me some Bijan, some Drake London, some... Kyle Pitts and and you know maybe in, in Superflex I'm drafting Kirk Cousins. I'm not saying he's not good at, at being four. Or, or I'm sorry, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know potential type type of score. He cer certainly could. Uh, Hedge says, did you see Tank Dell and Nico picture? Yeah, we talked about the 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 already the jerseys leaked. It's a great it's a great photo. Um, I'll try and put that photo up in a second. But we're we're here on this one right now. But I appreciate your super chat, Tank Dell season. To the moon, bro. To the moon. To the moon. To the moon. To the moon. Um, but this guy, to set the backstory real quickly, Michael Florio from NFL Pro, Pro or, uh, what was it, NBC Sports, uh, Pro Football Talk, he said that he had a report that Kirk Cousins, when we thought Kirk might be going to Atlanta, Kirk called up Kyle Pitts and said, what do you want for the number eight? And he inquired about the number eight jersey, which was untrue. And so Kyle Pitts immediately retweeted him, called him out and said, this is, you'll make up anything because that didn't happen. But then they end up having the conversation in real life right after and the trade went through. It, it all lined up, but it was him totally guessing and uh, ended up uh, being right. But it doesn't matter. It's still smoke because Kyle Pitts said it was. We had not had a conversation of it. He said, Michael, and tweeted him. They did have a conversation and the conversation went like this. It went like, hey, this is Kirk. Hey, this is, this is Kyle Pitts. Hey, uh, what do you want for the number eight, Kyle? Kyle Pitts said, I just want targets. He said, no, I want to give you money or something for it. He said, don't worry about it. Just throw the football in my direction. And ends up being that they don't even go down that road after all. Kirk Cousins decides to wear number 18. And honestly, I'm fine with it. Fresh start. Keep Kyle Pitts in the eight. That's good for me. Although I wouldn't mind Kyle Pitts having a little a little refresh himself. I don't know if I want to. I want everything to feel fresh and new for him. So maybe he should be surrendering the eight overall anyway, just to get a new fresh, you know, fresh start. But eighteen goes to to Cousins. It's a good look. I'm excited about it. Um, not huge news, but something I wanted to at least address. Tyler Huntley. We, we already mentioned that. Oh God, the Patriots. Poor poor Travis. I know Travis is in here. The Patriots don't know what getting a big name wide receiver even means. They have no clue. And part of me knows now. That it's all craft. It, it, it almost didn't even have anything to do with at least talent acquisition. Bill Belichick. Like clearly Kraft has got his hands on the sack of whoever's making decisions and he squeezes tightly whenever they start looking and browsing, window shopping at big name players. KJ Osborne. 
Next, uh, Mike Williams is injured, and he's the talk of the town right now. The bell of the ball. Everyone's like, where is he going to land? The Jets, the Panthers, the Steelers? Who cares? Next, uh, Bakhtiari. <laughs> like, do I, have, do I have to spell this out? Looking for a home. Planning on playing 2024. He made his intentions clear. Does, do we have to even go over anything else? He's going to be a New York Jet. He's going to play with Aaron Rodgers. Am I the only one that's going to say this? He's going to be a New York Jet. This is pretty obvious to me. It's not out there yet. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen. Next. Alexander Madison uh, signs with the, the Raiders. You know why this is news? Because it means Zeus is the top back and Alexander Madison can't hold Zeus's jock strap up. And Alexander Madison is going to be getting Zeus Zamir White some coffee. So this is actually, we maybe we should have led with this news. And by the way, I don't know if any of you have been sleeping at the wheel, but one of our moon men name, named Zamir White would like to tell you something. The moon men. Dropping loads in outer space. Prepare for departure, Zamir. Zamir White, your shuttle is leaving. Oh, I'm sorry, Zamir's already on the moon. He caught the previous shuttle. This man's already sitting on the moon right now. Maybe he should take a trip over to Mars. Because this signing right now seems to point to me that the Raiders have already decided on this being the running back stable. And I don't know about you, but Alexander Madison maybe is is even incapable of getting Zeus's coffee. Get him a coffee, pal. Get him a coffee, do it live. This is one of those next, you know, pieces of news. Although it's so impacting to Zeus and what it means for Zeus, it's the best piece of news we've got on the screen and probably will all night. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Zeus to the moon. If you don't know who Zeus is, I'm taking away your Bijan card. Your Bijan card has been revoked. Zeus to the moon. Zamir White is going to absolutely be a sleeping giant. Now, I don't know how long people sleep on him. I don't really know if people are astute, as astute as all of you. That they're going to go sit there and go, Alexander Madison equals this. I think they're going to be like Maggie from accounting over in San Francisco. They're going to forget to carry the one. This is complex uh, geometry right here. This is like al algebra. This is, uh, this is finite mathematics right here. Alexander Madison news means Zeus to the freaking moon. The moon. It's that simple. But a lot of people might not connect the dots. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. All I know is this screams to me that they're not probably focused on the running back position in the draft. Maybe they still take somebody the risk with the draft, especially with a, a weak running back classes that anybody can fall, right? Anybody can fall. A good big time player quorum could fall to the right pick, and it's like, hey, take him, take him. Let's also let's also grab him. Braylon Allen could fall really far. And the and the and the Raiders say, why not? Just grab them. So there's 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 still risk in the NFL draft, but this to me screams that they're less likely to even try and target a running back unless it falls in their lap on draft day. Maybe somebody really late, but not nobody's gonna matter anything. This is Zamir White's team, and this news solidifies it. really the best news we've had all night to be honest with you <laughs> that, that's a doozy right here all right here's i know we've been talking about this a lot i saved it for last because I, I figured i don't want anybody to be like more fields news but we have to just address these couple things russell wilson as we've already talked about russell wilson is expected to be the starting quarterback uh this was made clear by mike tomlin himself but this is great news because we have arthur smith commanding this offense maybe he gets you know, a, a tighter leash put on him by midseason. And I think all the mess-ups that Arthur might do early on are going to be on Russell Wilson's shoulders. And I'm not wishing ill will upon Russ Wilson, but I also am very much rooting for Fields to climb into that lineup by midseason, take over, and become the future 
of, of the Pittsburgh Steelers attack, and then they move on from from uh, from uh, Arthur Smith. I almost forgot his name. They move on from him after this one year that they're going to give him this mistake of a contract they gave him. And I think it could all work out very well for Fields. But even if Arthur Smith is in place still, and they don't fire him midseason, let's say, this is an impromptu off-schedule quarterback that I think can potentially put himself in better positions than Ritter was capable of, especially with Arthur Smith not making horrible personnel calls and on-the-field calls on top of Osin. And I think at the end of the day, this man rises up. Uh, now, the report was that the, the Bears had an offer with stronger draft capital for Fields, but chose the Steelers to continue his development. Uh, reportedly, Fields wanted to go here versus a couple of other spots. Maybe it was a place where he had no shot at climbing up, which is, let's just say it's like Buffalo or uh, or Cincinnati, where it's like zero shot he can grab a hold of the job. This is a very crafty location. We we all agree that Russell Wilson is shaky at best. So this is a great place to go, and it's smart on fields to deny, or if they gave him any say at all, I want to go here, here. It doesn't relieve polls of any, oh, polls actually did the right thing, and blah, blah, blah. Um, polls crap the bed on this situation, and no matter what anybody tells me, or says to me, or tries to convince me Fields isn't good. I don't care about your Fields analysis. I'm sorry. Like, if I cared, I'd, I, uh, no offense, but I would be calling you up and saying, hey, what do you think about Fields? I don't, I, I have my own assessment of Fields. I, I love hearing other takes. And that's why we have an open phone line. I love the banter, the discussion, the back and forth. But I don't need to be fantasy splained or NFL splained why Fields is bad. I disagree with you. Fields was in a crap situation, and I don't judge him for it. That's the end of this discussion. You can't say a single thing to me that's going to change my mind. You can't say, well, he was. this is his accuracy. Let me tell you the stats. I don't care. Do you think I don't know the numbers? Do you think I don't study stats like Maggie from accounting over in San Francisco? Do you think I don't study this, look at it, take a, another look at it, re-look at it, and understand the magnitude of the numbers? I don't buy for a second that Fields would have busted anywhere else and right now he's in bus mode right now he's broken and I can't emphasize enough that Fields is broken and he's got no guarantees to recover and become an elite quarterback because he's broken I don't know how many more times I can say that to somebody without them saying oh you're just all over field I'm not I'm hopeful he's the best quarterback in the QB room and if he gets the right shot to rise up, he will make everybody look silly just like Lamar did. Just like I predicted Lamar would. When Lamar was franchise tagged for two first rounders, I said he'd be gone within 24 to 48 hours. Not one team went after him. Do I feel embarrassed? Is my mother embarrassed for me? Did I? Did I? Was I ashamed to my family because I got that wrong? No, because I was right. And I'm still right. Lamar Jackson was... Um, every team that, pa that passed on him made a grave mistake. Every team that was a contender or could have been a contender punted their chances of becoming an elite team when they passed on Lamar Jackson for a measly, arbitrary two first-round picks. I was right. He was the move. Nobody made the move. Nobody attempted to make the move. And they all made a mistake. And I could care less what the other teams think of him. This whole stupid argument like Smitty, if he was any good, Smitty, but Smitty, if he was any good, wouldn't the team want him? No teams want him. Doesn't that say something? No! It doesn't mean anything. Because the same thing happened with Lamar Jackson. Do you not understand, Bob? And keyboard Clifford that's going, if he were Oh, he just said what I was going to say. Let me, if teams, if he was good teams, let me hit backspace, would have traded for him. Yeah, Clifford, I took away your ammunition because I don't care about it. I don't care if 30 teams thought he was garbage. I don't care. They're wrong. I don't care that every team that didn't have a great quarterback that could have got Lamar, I didn't care that they didn't think Lamar was worth two first rounders. I didn't care. I don't care now. I didn't care then. I'm right now. I was right then. 
and maybe he busts, and I won't I won't feel wrong at all because he's worth the, the the trade. He's worth the cultivation. He's worth the attempt. He's worth the risk. Is he broken beyond repair? I don't know that, and you can't know that. You have to bring him in at six round value, and assess that. That's like saying, hey, you can bring your car in for a free quote, and I'll fix it for the cost of of ten dollars. It might go to 20 if it runs really well. Do you want me to fix your car? No. I, I, I'm going to take my chances with this uh, this vehicle that doesn't run over here. These teams were sleeping at the wheel. And I know there were other offers. But none of them were so grand that the team said, Fields, I know you want to go to Pittsburgh, but bro, we just got a second round offer over here. Teams that did not say, let's get competitive enough to take Fields' decision-making and sway out of this, those teams should be ashamed of themselves. Every team in the National Football League, 30 teams made a mistake not making this man the backup quarterback, the best backup quarterback in the National Football League. Every team made a mistake. And if there was a team, and reportedly there was, that had a really, really good quarterback in place, we haven't heard word as to which team it was, there's some rumors, but we don't know for sure. Let's say it was the Bengals. The Bengals should have said, okay, our, our offer was better. It was a fourth non-conditional versus the six-round conditional to a fourth. They offered a fourth. The Bengals should have said, okay, that doesn't tickle your fancy, and that makes you want to send Fields over to, to Steelers uh, Nation. We'll give you a third. Oh, third doesn't work? Okay, final offer. We'll give you a second, a future second-round pick. Or we'll give you a third that's conditional to second. How about that? How about a fourth-rounder conditional? To a second. Do you not understand that conditional to a second and being a fourth, if it doesn't work out, are two different things? Does anybody understand that Fields, if he works out, is worth multiple first rounders? And if he doesn't work out, okay, then he was worth the fourth or fifth to just try it out. And it's no big deal. How about a fourth rounder conditional to a second? And was I wrong in saying that that's what his value was? No, because that's what he's worth. Do the other teams agree? No, they don't. Does that make them right? No, it does not. 30 teams made a mistake. And I don't want to hear that the, the 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 Steelers just turned them down four fields. They turned them down because it wasn't substantially better. If someone said, okay, we're going to make you disregard Fields' feelings, let's give them more. Conditional. Conditional. Fields to the moon. This is the best landing spot for him in hindsight. He takes the job from Russell Wilson. I don't know when, but at some point. And all you Fields haters continue to pile it on. Throw your receipts in the comments. We're ready for it. I don't care. Phone lines are open. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. That is all she wrote for news. And now we're going to open the phone lines up and take some phone calls from you monsters out there who are out here doing amazing work, hitting the thumb up button, doing it live. Appreciate every single one of you. Um, a lot of news. And this IUK stuff is going to, I think, piss off some people. Did we get another super chat that I didn't see come through here? No, we got we got Hedge. Hedge, appreciate that super chat, pal. Anybody that has another super chat, hit me with it. I'm going to throw them on screen. I'm going to do a very a very good job moving forward of addressing super chats immediately. Uh, Sebastian, you're live from Cali. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? You're on mute, bra. Yeah. What's up? I was just going to ask, what are your thoughts on Quentin Johnston if the Chargers do take like a rubber dude today? Who's that? Top. Who's that? Quentin Johnston. Who's that? Is that, is that that body catcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, that, that is that that exactly big, that about. big, slow sloth of a body catcher over in, in Chargerville? Um, I, I like, I like Quentin Johnston now that there's nobody there. <laughs> you know, he's a little bit, a little bit intriguing. You know, he's standing there by himself on the dance floor. Nothing but ladies. He's the only guy at the ball. Like, deep in an underdog draft, you draft him and all the backups and everything. Like, you take, 
You, you take every every non Malik neighbors or a Doomsday receiver, whoever they end up taking, and you have the number two for sure, right? If you draft Quentin Johnson, you draft uh, what's his face, um, what's the, what's the wide receiver three's name in, in LAC? Not, I don't even know. Not Joshua <laughs> Kelly. He's the running back. Who's the other one? Palmer, is he Palmer, 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 Joshua Palmer. I was thinking Joshua Kelly and Joshua Palmer. So you grab Palmer, Quentin Johnson, everybody like this two, three, four, whatever, like in a, a deep dynasty league or something. If you had all those guys, at least you know you'd have the number two. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I like, I like, I like Quentin Johnson, Palmer, Cuff together. I don't like Quentin Johnson a lot by himself. And as soon as they draft Malik Neighbors or Adunze, if they do, and they should, unless you know. I don't know. They could punt it, but I don't know. It'd be crazy. It wouldn't be. It would be crazy, but it also wouldn't shock me because Harbaugh feels like he could do some weird stuff. I think everybody's expecting Harbaugh to be predictable, and I don't know that we're gonna. But Quentin Johnson's got a lot to prove, bro. I'm I'm not huge on on this guy. Yeah, I, I Is called him. The watch the spot in best ball. Do you think like yeah, where yeah, going? yeah? It seems only like 14, 15, 16. Sure, but around. but like I said, Quentin Johnson and get get. Uh, Joshua as well, and and cuff them together, and then and then I think you you got maybe potential good best ball wide receiver rotation, you know, because you're you're guaranteed something. So Palmer and and him together is is solid. It's solid, but I don't know, bro. I I mean, I'll just tell you this: my my 2023 rookie analysis had him as the softest wide receiver. He was the biggest body, and he was soft as hell. And I, I don't think he knew how to navigate and dominate the space around him. Spatial intelligence is something you can't really teach a player. You know who had the mo the best spatial intelligence, I think, in the history of sports is Michael Jordan. His ability to, like, know what to do and there, just yeah. maneuver. And, and Jordan, when he, Jordan would go up, he would collide with the defender in the perfect way. They would put him right in balance with his shot and everything. And there weren't a lot of players that played like Jordan back then. Now, that's one thing people don't know. He revolution, revolutionized a lot. People, you know, Kobe mimicked him, and he de he developed a lot. He invented a lot, an innovator in the game. His spatial awareness was amazing, and you can't really teach that. And, and I think Quentin Johnson doesn't have it. I think his spatial awareness is, is zero. But receiver X is his rookie year now. It's not like in the Larry Fitzgerald days where rookies didn't do anything their rookie year. You kind of know, like if they don't show signs of anything, it's hard to imagine him just rising up and exploding, especially when you're about to bring in a Doomsday or neighbors, bro. Yeah, and he, it, it reminds me a lot of even Elijah Moore too. Like we all thought he was gonna, he was gonna make it, and he, he showed some flashes, and he just he never made that next step. Yeah, um, Smitty said MJ over LeBron, of course. No, no, nobody embarrass themselves tonight and put LeBron as the GOAT in the chat. You're just you're literally telling everybody you're 22 years old, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with being 22, but you, you don't even know who Jordan is. You saw you saw a VHS tape, and you didn't even know how to use it. And like that, that Jor Jordan was the, the best player to ever play the game. It's hard to, to, to argue different generations, and even Jordan said that. But if you try and account for the generation part of it, and you say, okay, for his generation, and LeBron for his generation, and and uh, you know Abdul Jabbar for his generation, um, you know th those th those things are. I think you can do them. I know people have a tough time trying to separate themselves, but if you didn't watch Jordan play live basketball, and I'm not talking about a replay or a YouTube highlight, if it, and some could say this about me with Wilt Chamberlain. Like, maybe I shouldn't be running my mouth about Wilt Chamberlain since I didn't see him play. I only saw I only saw highlights like a lot of MJ haters see highlights of MJ. And and I can, in fair point, touche, and I could say, you know what, Wilt Chamberlain is the only one I probably can't say. Maybe they're on the same level. Like, maybe they really are, and I, I could totally agree with that. But I've watched Jordan play his entire career since I was a little guy. I had a basketball hoop on my parents' bathroom door. I'd, I'd dribble out every game until the final clock. I'd replay everything that Jordan did. I'd redo the move. I was talking to myself. I, I, that was me every single night playing Michael Jordan. I was Jordan shooting through that hoop. Uh, for three! I forget what it said. It was uh, it had, it had a little countdown clock and everything. LeBron James is one of the best players to ever play the game. 
But LeBron James, Jordan would be ashamed of LeBron and all his, his acting and flopping and all that stuff. Jordan would never have done that. Not to mention Jordan, if he played in today's game, and Allen Iverson said this, if Jordan played in t- today's game, he'd average over 50 points a game. It, it would be unreal. It would be unfair. It would be crazy. The NBA is soft compared to, t- to, the, to that time in basketball. It was so aggressive. It was so hard to, to, to navigate the paint. People are crazy when they start talking about this stuff. It's it's insane. They really are showing, you know, that they didn't actually watch Jordan play. All right, enough of that. Um, Travis, you're live. Hang tight, Sebastian. Yeah, um, yeah with, with Quentin Johnson, too, he, he had multiple opportunities last year to show those flashes to injuries to Allen and, and um, you know, Palmer and Mike Williams and and uh, he really never flashed at all. Like, not even one game or anything did he, you know, stand out like he, yeah. he hoped to see anyway. He just um, what he just wasn't was, like. Um, wasn't any he wasn't any good. Yeah, he just wasn't any good. Like I I didn't uh, I didn't get a sense that he was good. I got a sense that he was. Uh, I don't know. He was the biggest one to college. Like he should be way. Way stronger, way faster than everybody else on the field, and he's not. Right. You know, it's almost like he doesn't uh, know his hey. ability. But go ahead. Oh no, underdog. Have you seen under quarterbacks? Quarterback number forty-two is called Johnny Football. That's not man down. He's not consistent, is he? Um, I'll have to look. I don't know. Um. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a screenshot of it, but it was just, it's just odd because I'm, I'm in a draft and I'm looking at it right after Jacoby Brissett and Johnny Football. It's odd. But um, I just wasn't sure if you or anyone else had seen that. So. Pro- probably, uh, uh, probably is him. I don't know. That's weird. I guess, I guess man, he's still in the system. So what do, you, what do you guys, uh, th- what do you guys think? Pumped. What? I was calling on IU actually the, the uh, topic. Um, okay. Did, did, were you going to say something? Yeah, go ahead. Hit me, hit me with it. I was going to say, what about all this news? Um, I think, I think this year I've said it before is the perfect year for them to move on from one of their receivers because I think they can replace him. I mean, if they could have gotten Zay Jones and the seventeen, that would have been really good. But um, I, I go back and forth which one I. I'd want to trade if I was the 49ers or if I was a Niners fan. I, I think I'd rather keep IU. I think only because I don't know how much longer Debo has at like an elite, elite uh, level of play. Yeah. Injuries worth worrying a little bit, but um, I think they can replace it. But th- I think with their system, they can replace it, a receiver. And you could argue that IU skill set might be a little easier to replace than Debo. So yeah, it's I'm kind of it's kind of tough. Which one I'd trade? It's yeah. kind of tough because it comes down to compensation too, right? It comes down to like what these teams will pay. You know what I mean? So if the compensation's there for for Debo more than it is for Ayuk, then he's easier to trade. If Ayuk's compensation, you know, this all comes down to compensation. I think also yeah. you get to choose the the contract. You get to start over fresh. If you're going to pay an Ayuk, you want to pay him for. You know, being a uh, being a you know fresh you know full contract, don't have to worry about it for you know four years, whatever the case may be. Uh, Debo's got the mileage, as you said. There's a little bit more injury risk, but he's also like a the kind of player that can be the the engine of the entire team. You know, and maybe he wouldn't do that in certain environments. Um, you definitely have to have a coach that understands how to use Ayuk. Um, but like Buffalo would be. It could be a place where he doesn't yeah. play as well as we think, but it could be a place where he excels like a monster. I don't know. I, 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 I think he could, if yeah. he got rid of Diggs, what, I, I think he could slide right into that yeah. big role. The, the, same thing, the same thing I said about Fields for for a few days when I said I, I have a feeling that, that, a, that, a, uh, that a Fields trade's coming in the next 48 hours. I don't know if you remember me saying that. And that it happened within yeah. the 48 hours. I have a really, really strong sense that Diggs... If he doesn't get traded in the next like two, three, four days, or even a week, it's because like the Ayuk example trade, it just falls through or something. 
but I think they're they're trying to trade them. There's a lot of cryptic tweets coming out of Diggs right now. Like, like the most recent one he yeah. tweeted tweeted was God, I trust you, and he keeps he keeps saying things like uh he says Welp on one tweet. I know he's trying to troll people. Like of course he's like he, he's that kind of guy, but he certainly certainly I think entering a space where he's proving again he doesn't care. He's not vocalizing that he loves the team. He feels distant from the team in everything that he's saying, every interaction he has online. Yeah. He's completely painting a picture that whatever he said a few weeks ago, like combine time frame, when Josh Allen and him both went on different podcasts, not the same one. We still haven't seen this couple together holding hands out in public. We just keep hearing about how the relationship's great. There, there's, there's no signs of this actually being okay. And, 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 and Diggs came out and said he's happy, he's fine, he wants to stay. Uh, Josh Allen said he, he owes Diggs a lot. He helped make his career, and he can't wait to do great things with him this year. And and uh, and so at the end of the day, they tried to like fix the public perception, but what's currently going on right now feels and smells very different than what it did during Combine Week. And I think that Diggs is on the verge of potentially being moved. They could even cut him. And June 1, designated as a June 1 cut, all that stuff is very important information. The draft coming up, would a team even want to trade for him? Is Diggs' contract too out of pocket to be something that's attractive? And our team's just going to say, he's 30 years old, turning 31, right? How can we trade for him? Are you okay, Denny? You keep hearing a bunch of, like, growling. Oh, dude, I'm bringing it in. Uh, I'm taking it all in. Are you... But are you warming up to say something? Like you sound like you're revving up. You're going. Yeah, no, no, no. So, didn't Gabe Davis go somewhere else? Yes, Denny. So, wait, why would they be thinking uh, Diggs is going? Because no, I, a... I think Diggs and um, Diggs and Allen are gonna get it going on, but. Didn't uh, yeah yeah he went with Gabe Davis go? he went somewhere else right Smitty? he went to Jacksonville he got that Christian Kirk money remember Christian Kirk got paid I'm bank man they, you know who else went to Matt, Jacksonville Matt Jones <laughs> yeah, um, yeah oh, G- G- Gabe Davis got paid bank bro Matt Jones gonna be here just hold the clipboard but. Uh, Man, you need to catch you need to catch no. the show more. Gabe, talking, right? Gabe Davis got thirty mi- thirty nine million dollars. Eleven about, uh, fields and Wilson. They, they just went. I mean, I I, I, just, I just went I just went over all that, Denny. So I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to. Okay. Love that. Just, okay. I, all right, Denny. If he doesn't work out, we'll take him. All right. Hang tight, Denny. Hang tight. Um, Diggs is a Ooh. diva. Great wide receiver, Smitty, though. How do you feel about, like, seriously, if you had the third pick overall? I uh, know you love this, Caleb. I know you love this kid. But... You're, you're zipping it right now, Denny. You're, okay. Let's you're say zipping if you had it. Are you in Vegas right now? Are you in Vegas right now what, at, yeah, a, yeah, at, a, yeah. at a slot machine? No, what the hell are we doing? It? It's awesome, man. I love it. <laughs> Smitty, how do you feel about Smitty, that? Can you hear me right now? I can hear you. Can you not hear me? Can you hear me what? I oh, know, Smitty, my best friend. <laughs> no, I just can't call him. Talking? I can't hear Smitty. Yeah, you can't hear me. Oh, so it's, who are you? So it's okay. me. You. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, yeah. I can, okay. I can yeah, okay. Someone uh, like, yeah, I like Denny. Denny, I would just say, Denny, I'd say this at the number three overall pick. If JD five's not there, you're probably going. You're thinking Drake May, but unfortunately, the for the for the Patriots, and unfortunately for for uh, Travis, who's on the phone right now, I think they trade down. But if they trade down to eleven, let's say the Minnesota Vikings, the most likely trade partner, eleven and twenty three for the three. Okay, if you still get Penix Jr., Bo Nix is not the end of the world for New England, and it actually could be a blessing in disguise. It doesn't feel like it, but if JD5 is there, New England's taking him. 
And if JD5 is there, that's who I would take. If I was on the on the clock at number three overall, and I'm the New England Patriots, I'd probably go. Okay. I look. This isn't going to work out right now because Fields is gone. I would have traded for Fields. I would have given up his. Figure out how to trade back into another pick that's somewhere in this territory to get my hands on Bo Nix or Penix Jr. That's the only solution for me. But but I'm crazy. But that's the only thing I would contemplate doing yeah, if JD5 okay. wasn't there at three. You know what was awesome? Me and you weren't connected, but I was just talking to uh, one of your boys while we were connecting. He was like, hey, Danny, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's um, chill. I was like, hey, what's up, man? That was kind of nice of him. Um, All right. Cool. Hey, hey, Denny, Denny, hang tight. Denny, hang tight for me, okay? Hang tight for me, real quickly. All right, yeah, I'll hang tight, man. Yeah, I'll chill, man. Uh, All right, right. mute, mute, mute for, mute for me, real okay. quickly, because we're we're gonna try and keep the the show moving here. Um. All right, I'm mute. mute. All right, mute, All right, mute, real mute, right. not fake mute. Uh, for for those that think that uh, Ayuk isn't on the move, though, Travis, I I think it's it's I mean it, it's certainly not in in the cards. You know, at this current moment, because the only trade idea that was floated out there, or, or trades that may or may not have actually went down, is been pulled back. But who the hell knows? You know, who the hell knows? There could be four other teams in conversations with the Niners because of the same reasons I talked about earlier. Are any of you going to telegraph that you're in the middle of a trade talk with another owner? No, because you you don't want any competition for what you're going after. So. We, we, just like we didn't know that that potential, if it was even true, that that potential Jaguars deal was in motion, we probably have no idea that two or three teams are on the phone with the Niners going, hey, you know, what if we give you this? What if we give you that? But back to what we're talking about before we started hurt, hearing Denny, you know, making the noises, is that if Buffalo were to take Debo, that would be phenomenal. It, it, it could work out, it could not work out just because of the way Buffalo uses players, but I think it would be a good fit at the end of the day. You trade Diggs away, Diggs could easily be moved. Where would Diggs go? Baltimore makes sense for me. You wouldn't have to give up a, a lot. lot of you wouldn't have to give up a lot. In a way, you're almost dumping contract, you know, in a, in a sense. You're almost like, yeah. okay, what would it cost? A fourth rounder? Like, the way Fields was devalued, I wonder if Diggs would even get you a third. Maybe give you a third, maybe give you a fourth. I don't know. I don't think he'd cost a, sec a second. You know, so maybe Baltimore. Maybe this is one of those trades where Buffalo looks silly because they get rid of them, but they're really saving a lot of money. And doesn't it doesn't it sound very much like what Buffalo's been doing all offseason, dumping contracts yeah. and just freeing up all this yeah. cash? So it makes sense they're going to get rid of Whoever gets him, they, they, I guess they couldn't cut him because he's a $49 million dead cap. But whoever does get him, there's an out in his contract after last year, after, um, next year. So they could pay him the you know $20 million whatever for a year and then either get out of it or continue on with him. Well, um, Diggs, is his, it ha he has a $49 million dead cap, but... Uh, I, I forget what how much of that you know is going to the new team that's acquiring him. It, it depends on when the trade goes down too, but I'll find out the exact details on the numbers. But also keep in mind that I wouldn't say it's impossible for them to cut oh. him to cut him because at the same time um, we saw the worst contract probably in history. Russell Wilson's, you know, play out that way. This guy, this guy was what is seventy plus million dollars in dead cap, and they're dividing that right. over two two years. So it's certainly possible if they feel like this guy's dead weight, um, then they they may potentially do it. Plus, you know, there's a eighteen take this hit now and not hamper their future. So they free up all this money. They've made a lot of cuts. They freed up money. And then they try and figure out a way to right. to allow Diggs to go on and say it's not healthy for our team. He's not healthy. I believe he's holding the team back 100. percent I don't think this team feels strong. This year, I don't think. Uh, I know people want Diggs to work out. I know people that own him in fantasy want him to stay because there is no better home than Josh Allen throwing him the football. But he is unhealthy for this team. He's it, Josh doesn't trust him. On the field, you could see it during the game. It was the final drive. He didn't even throw it to Diggs, who was open, more open than the receiver deep in the end zone, but he threw it into the end zone. He got hit, unfortunately, when he threw it, so people second-guessed the throw. He should have thrown it to Diggs. He was wide open, but it was a, a shorter route. 
doesn't you know, like it doesn't matter. He doesn't trust him. He dropped a play a uh, ball earlier in the game, and he doesn't care. He doesn't care if he catches it or doesn't catch it. If he's not catching the game-winning touchdown, he doesn't even care. So he's dead weight. He's he's a drag on the offense. And quite frankly, if I'm the Buffalo Bills and I'm sitting here at this number, uh, the Bills have the number 28 pick. If Diggs can even move me up a little bit, I would do that trade. Like I don't know if you can you can you know if you could get your hands on Brian Thomas Jr. instead of Diggs at the end of the day, that would be unbelievable. Right. That would be my goal. It says um, it says his salary for this year fully guaranteed yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'd say this. Say, yeah, real quickly, De- De- Denny, hold on one second. One second. One second. Also, I would say that if if you want to move this pick up, like I said, maybe you trade Diggs and in, in I don't know, uh, like like Dallas. What if Dallas? What if Diggs wants to go to Dallas? Makes sense too. Family ties, like you. So so Diggs goes to Dallas and they exchange twenty four and twenty eight picks, and you free up a lot of money. Whatever. Now you use a future first rounder or whatever to move twenty four up, and you get Thomas, uh, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. or Dunze or whatever. You'd have to move up really high, but that's the kind of move. That's how I would maneuver this. I would not sit on Diggs another year. I would not get rid of him without replacing him. I'd get ultra aggressive and I'd try and move this twenty eight up into a territory that's high enough to get Thomas Jr., which is going to be higher. It's not going to be right here, but you might have to move there initially with Dallas and figure something out go ahead denny oh i just uh, i i just hit do your uh, mute button i didn't want to run it but uh do, what what did they do with, oh my god smith what didn't they get rid of uh Kate davis then denny we just had this conversation pal okay all right so you don't think you really don't think that uh, Diggs is, is the one that catches that ball? <laughs> <laughs> Denny, what are you doing back there? What are you doing back there, Denny? <laughs> Denny, I feel, I feel like you st- you start your sentence, sentences tonight without even knowing what you're going to ask, and you, then you come up with in the middle of the sentence. You're like, hey, do you think that, uh, what can I say here? <laughs> <laughs> Denny, God, Denny, Denny, we, Denny, we, did we no, just become friends. best friends? No, we've always been best friends, maybe. Oh, dude, karate, all, all day. <laughs> Denny. Smith. Oh, Denny. Did I, you crack me up, bro. I just, I, sometimes I just call it to say hi. Uh, I you know, know what I'm saying? I know. I don't even think you listen to the show, to be honest. I just think you, somehow you I found do. my number, you called in, and you, you, you got the wrong guy, and you just kept talking to me, and now you... I don't even think you watch football. Many, <laughs> many. <laughs> I think no. you just dialed in one time and it's like, hey, who's this? Who's this? <laughs> this is Denny. All right. Did you mean to call Frank from Kentucky? You didn't get Frank. Want to be best friends? Okay. I don't think you watch the show, Denny, but I, I don't hate you for it. I don't hate you for it. You're not even listening to the show now. <laughs> I, I try it. No, I do. I call in. I I, I try, but but I think De- I Denny, it. Denny, oh. you call you call me more when I'm not live on the air than when you like. I see the phone ringing, and Denny will call just randomly throughout the night. I know you're not listening because you don't know the show is even not live. <laughs> hey, but you, you answer the phone once in a while. I, about right? about ten percent of the time, I answer the phone. Now, look, there's some <laughs> things. There's some things I can't stop and move for. I'm busy, but. It's not because I don't want to answer, Denny. All right. Hey, Denny, uh, hang tight. Okay, go ahead. What, one more thing, Denny, then I'm going to let you go just so you can get some rest. Go ahead. Hit me with it. Any question Any question you got, Denny? Ooh, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to go. Uh, if you had, first I'm going to say uh, I really don't appreciate when you pick up. When I call it. I got you. Smith I got you, Denny. And he's like, hey, you know the show's not on. I, I like it. How you doing? <laughs> he, he acts like the studio lines in my. You act like the studio lines in my back pocket. I'm walking around the grocery store and I pick up and and uh, hello, <laughs> hey Smitty. Hey, we're not live right now. Oh, I know. I'm just calling to see what you're getting at the grocery store, Smitty. 
<laughs> TD. Sometimes you have to go to the uh, produce. Go to the, uh, you get more if you go to, um, you know what I mean, the, the no, ones that are, the bananas that are not, they're rotten. The rotten bananas. Uh, but no, Smitty, he will pick up once in a while. He's, right. he's a good friend. All right. Hey, Denny, I appreciate you. I'm going to let you go for now. Right, no, Call I'll in any time. No. Appreciate Smitty. Yeah. Smitty. Real quick, real quick. All right. If you had the third pick, third pick in the draft, what would you do, Smitty? We just what would had you this do? conversation, Denny. You just asked me this. Stuck in a time loop. Dude, I care about what Time loop. We're back. We're back. Let's go. We're going to go into the time machine and go back about 30 lot. seconds. We're and we're going to ask the same question. What would I do with what? Can you ask the question? The number three overall pick? That's a fantastic question. I'd take JD5. Really I'd trade yeah. for I'd trade for Marvin or uh, draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and I would trade oh. up and, and redraft another quarterback. Hold on, let's go back and do it one more time. What, what would I do with the number three overall pick? That's a great question, Denny. That's a great question. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, now you're making a, uh, you know, now, not, not, now you're making an F out of me, huh? No, it's, Denny. It's, 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 no, 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 no. It's not right. All right, Denny. Hey, I appreciate, I pre- I appreciate you, Denny. You go, Marvin. Marvin. You know what the saddest song I ever heard was? Sing it. Marvin. He was a friend of mine. And he could sing a song. His heart in every line. You know what I'm talking about here, right? I do. Denny, I'm going to get in the time machine and go forward 30 seconds when I hang up on you and wish you a good night. Denny, appreciate you. Call, call in call in tomorrow. We'll see you later. We just got off the phone with Denny a few minutes ago. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry, Denny. There's only the, the the crowd loves you, but when you're in this mode, there's only so much the the listeners can take, especially if they're a first time like watcher. They're like, "What's going on? I'm trying to get some information here, and this is going in a loop." <laughs> like, what's going on with my? Anyway. What's going on in my YouTube? My YouTube's going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, uh, Travis, what else you got? R- anything else before I, I let you jump? Niners screwing up the, the accounting. Maggie from, from accounting just absolutely jacked up the entire books. And the Niners got ripped a 2025 fifth round pick. Their fourth rounder gets moved to the back of the fourth round in 2024. Um, yeah. The only thing I would say about, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but in terms of contracts, if they do trade IU, that might be their only way to get Devo to restructure his contract. Because if IU is there with a big contract, Devo's not going to restructure and take less, you know. So if they were to draft a guy or bring a guy in that's making not too much money, because Devo's contract, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, jumps up to like $20 million or 20 something million a year now. So it's pretty good the first couple of years. So I don't know what their point is there, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if they fixed the cap by getting rid of some guys or not. Yeah, but I know they were up against it. So, be interesting to see. I think um, I, I would guess I you could probably get more of a trade right now. I think you might have mentioned that, but you know, if there's a team that thinks that up, they're a Debo away from winning it all. You know, that could change things too. So, yeah. Uh, and I think that if Debo costs less, they might do the Debo trade. He might be more desirable. It just depends on what right. the Niners want. If this if this trade trade is true, and for those that are just joining, um, the deal was reportedly that fell through. The 17 overall plus Zay Jones for D, for Brandon Ayuk, and it says so, comma fizzling out. Uh, this was re-reported by a hundred different people that have, you know, huge X accounts and um, 
So it's not like it's one person talking about it. it. Now maybe it got generated by one person, and I don't. I don't even really know who generated that. That's just one um, specific report of the many. So I don't even know who the originator is of it. But I do believe that conversations have been had. Maybe that's a fabricated attempt of of dissecting what actually happened, and that's certainly possible. Could have been like if you talk to the Niners, they're like, no, we didn't have that conversation. But it could have been that they didn't have that conversation because Zay Jones wasn't involved. But they did have a call about Ayuk, and they talked about the 17 overall, maybe a future second rounder, like you know. And then they said no to that. But everybody's in smoke season. Everybody's trying to pretend they they got a lead on something. I get sick and sick and tired of all these people saying they've got a source here and a source there and and all that. And I rarely ever play that game to say that I have a sort a source. I will tell you, and I'm a very open and honest about who I'm talking to. And I, I, while I don't necessarily give names, I, I, a lot of times I'm talking to Raj and C Mac and Vlad and those guys and Raj, you know, mostly. Um, so if I if I'm talking about Niner stuff, I'll, I'll have him give me some estimations on stuff on stuff. Um, but I have groups like that all over the NFL, right? So some of them are more entrenched in their their team and on a, a more ground level than others. You know, Raj is very connected. He's very very in tune with what's going on in San Francisco. And so I have a, a chat group with every single team, you know, re, you know, type of, of scenario like that. So I, I definitely feel like I've got more connections than the average bear, like no doubt about it. But we're all still very much 95% of the time, every single person involved in this big, you know, tree that I've got going on here, 95% of the time, we're still getting our news from Schefter, Rappaport, and, 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 the, and Twitter. You know, like, and we're hearing it immediately. And I make no, I, I pretend 0% that my job is to break news. My job is to break down news. That's why I go live when news breaks. I don't sit here and say I'm a news breaking guy because nobody is in the business unless you're working in the, you're in, you have your hands on the inner workings of the NFL news, you know, space. Nobody. These people on Twitter that are trying to make a big name for themselves by trying to predict something, and then they're dead wrong, and they just blame the source and say, I can't talk about who it is. Those people are just wasting everybody's time, and they're trying to make a big name for themselves, and it's not even going to help them. No one's going to care. You know, the the person that broke the, the news on Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay, they didn't get, their, if, if I remember correctly, their, their, their Twitter account wasn't, like, so huge after that. Like, it, it, it doesn't... It doesn't do anything, and people just, I don't know what it is about people trying to make stuff up and be right, and, and they think it's going to pave their way in the industry. One time, because it's only going to happen once. If you're not a, a chef or somebody embedded in the news world, you may have an uncle's, maid's, brother's, cousin's, whatever, that's cleaning the office when they're having this conversation, and you just stumble into that opportunity or you have some connections and you're, you interview some players from the team and that person that you talk to kind of knows something. But guess what? They don't really know. They heard something too. And they also want to impress you by that they know this information and it's still eight degrees of separation. Nobody really knows. And if anybody that's random on Twitter says, according to my source, they're just trying to be cool. They don't know. They don't know. Everybody's an analyst now. Nobody has any track record whatsoever, especially on Twitter. Everybody just puts, you know, NFL news or fantasy football expert in my bio. And I, I give it the best advice on the internet is what they say in the bio. Everybody's an analyst. No one has a track record anymore. No one's got a journalism degree. No one's got nothing. No journalism degrees. No radio show experience from terrestrial radio. No nothing. No content creation for five or six years on their own before they actually claim to be this source and expert. And I, I, I like that people break out into the space. I really do. I think it's it's nice and exciting and fun to watch people rise up. But everybody acts like they've got something to bring to the table and they've got zero track record. Zero. I did radio for 19 straight years before I even dabbled on YouTube. And I'm not saying that makes me better than anybody. I just get tired of these people acting like they have some sort of track record. And they say, per source, and they just make it up. They just make it up because they feel like it's going to go here. If I predict it here, it's going to happen. If I predict it, because I, I think I think Fields is going to get traded tomorrow. So I'm going to say, according to my source, he's getting traded in 24 hours. That happened with Deshaun Watson. 
There was a person that said that Sean Watson was going to the Falcons and it was going to happen within 48 hours. Ended up being about like 70 hours went by. And he's like, I'm sorry, it's just a little delayed. And it was all over. Everyone was, there's a laughing stock. And then all of a sudden he went to the Browns and everybody just lost their crap on this guy. And in, the crazy part is it, the prediction that he was trying to ride was the most likely to happen. And he was going to the Falcons. Like everyone kind of thought it was probably going to happen. It had almost happened. And the word was that he was going to the Falcons. And at the last minute, the Browns swept in and offered him the guaranteed money. And you can see in the photo of Deshaun Watson when he's with his boys and there's a pool table and he's got the jersey on. I think he's on or he's holding it, the Browns jersey. In the back pocket, corner pocket, there's a crumbled up Falcons jersey shoved in the hole. <laughs> you can zoom in and see it. He was going to the Falcons and this guy that said I had a source crapped the bed. Just absolutely crapped it. Anyway. On the on that note, on that note, I'm predicting. <laughs> I'm predicting that Diggs is on the move. But that's my prediction. I'm not hearing a, a little birdie necessarily. And again, if I was, it would be somebody that's just closer to it than I am. They're not necessarily a source. Uh what's up, Travis? There's a lot of, I feel like there's quite a few teams who would want digs, even though, you know, there's, there's some reasons to be down on them or reasons to doubt them. Um, I still think there's quite a few teams who would be willing to take a shot at them, but depending on the price, obviously, but like the, you know, the price to acquire him. But I mean, there's still a lot of, a lot of teams that could use a receiver like him. You know, someone had mentioned Pittsburgh. Do you think they would take a shot at him? Um, let me go over it. As far as I, Ayuk, you, you're saying Ayuk? Yeah. It's yeah. crazy because. No, no, Diggs. Oh, Diggs. It's crazy because some of the teams that we feel like we don't feel need the receiver are the ones that might be very interested too, like the Jaguars. Uh, and that could have been, and right. that could have even been before the Gabe Davis signing, and it's like all just kind of coming out differently. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we don't even really know. But it wouldn't surprise me if a team like the Jaguars, who don't even have, they don't really necessarily, I don't want to say need them because everybody could use any, you know, any additional player. But yeah, like Pittsburgh doesn't feel like the team that needs it. The Jaguars don't feel like the team that needs it. Um, I hear T. Higgins to Arizona rumors a lot here in Arizona. And my close, by people close to the situation that are not sources, but they're just, they're, they're going to feel the, the vibrations of that stuff a little quicker. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, local buzz and stuff, but some beat writer questions that don't really get out there yet. Subtle stuff that, that said in an interview that doesn't hit Schefter or Rappaport for a while. Like, people don't realize that's how it all kind of comes about, too, sometimes. When it's not broken by Schefter or Rappaport and there's some sort of, like, not intentional leak to Schefter and Rappaport. Like, oh, okay, this trade's happening. Get on the phone. Let's call the NFL. Okay, media relations. Okay, let's let Schefter know. Let's, let's let it go the natural channels. We're talking about when something gets leaked or said wrong. Sometimes it'll take days for it to get, you know, found by somebody, highlighted by another person, highlight, and then all of a sudden it gets picked up. So that's why that becomes useful for me is to have conversations like I do with Raj and those guys, but for every team, and I have those because you feel the vibrations of, of stuff kind of coming down. But, uh, you know, I, I do think that, like, Pittsburgh, uh, Arizona with Higgins, all these weird moves, like, we would want them to go other places, but to predict where Higgins or Diggs could go, me saying where I think he should go is not really probably what's going to happen or what teams really, really right. want. So it's 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 hard. Like, it's hard to imagine. Like, Diggs and Indy would be great. I think Diggs could have one more elite year. I would, yeah, I just Indy would be great. I think Dallas would be not so great because of what it would do for for Lamb's value. And Diggs couldn't fully flourish, but he'd be great for Dallas. He'd be great for Dak. Or maybe it wouldn't be because he's a cancer in the locker room. You know what I mean? Like, would he be any different? Yeah. Or would he be rejuvenated for one year and be kind of a tamed uh, player? Uh, just when the Bucks uh, GM J let's just say, uh, joke with the NFL insider Adam Schefter. After breaking free agency news, uh, perps with the ten dollar hauler. Perps appreciate you. Perps to the moon. To the moon. Perps appreciate you. Perps in the building. Perps in the building. I'm sorry. What, Travis? Uh, well, like you, you were just saying, I'm waiting to for the moon. what happened in Dallas. It is almost like 
you wonder, does he have to just be the guy? Like, I had, I had joked about before they made some moves. Like, send him to Carolina, he'd probably be happy there. He so won't win, but he'll catch 110 balls and have all the stats and be the guy there, you know? Yeah. Think, but, like, swallow his pride to try to win a championship, or does he just not care? But, like, Diggs going to Jacksonville would be like, what? You know, Diggs going to Seattle, we'd yeah. be like, what in the hell? You know, Diggs going to New Orleans, right. we'd be like, damn it. Uh, no quarterback, really, and, and two res- two receivers now. Uh, Diggs going to yeah, – I think you hear the same thing with when Miami, when people say Miami should get should have got Henry or Barkley. It's like, what are you talking about? They got, I'm not saying most are going to stay yeah. healthy, but, but Miami Mike believes in him. And per game, he probably still do pretty well until he gets hurt. And I think he will get hurt. You got a chan like what in the what in the hell would you want Derrick Henry for? You should be going after a quarterback. Fields should have been the Miami Dolphin number one priority. Fields, even if you were going to start Tua, you should have went and got Fields. But no, Miami Mike didn't see the light. Miami yeah, Mike uh, uh, crapped the bed. Tua. He crapped the bed all over the place. Sharded the bed, crapped the bed, pissed all over himself by not bringing in Justin Fields for even up the ante. Up the ante. I don't want to hear it, Bob. I know Clifford, the keyboard warrior, is going, Smitty, dude, Pittsburgh, that's where Fields wanted to go and Poles was doing the right thing. I'm a, I'm a Poles supporter and you're wrong on this. You offer, if you're the Dolphins, an offer that doesn't allow you to consider Fields' feelings because at some point Poles would say it's a business. Sorry. Justin, you're going to Miami. They're offering a, a a non-conditional third rounder. And Miami should have done it. And if, if I was a decision maker, I would have said, okay, I know you want to send him to Pittsburgh. I get it. He wants to go there. But he might want to come here too because Tua Tagovailoa is no more secure and probably less secure long-term than Russell Wilson. I think this would have been easily a situation that, that Fields would have been okay with. Not to mention you up the ante... You overpay to get the Pittsburgh to get the, uh, the 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 Chicago Bears decision makers to say I know Fields wants to make a decision, but come on, we got to take this offer. Ridiculous! Crap the bed. Every team that didn't bring Fields in, all thirty teams that didn't bring him in, crap the bed. He's the best backup in the National Football League, and he's probably still a top twelve potential quarterback that is going to surplant and, and take uh, Russell Wilson out of the out of the picture. When it comes to trading graphics, then I know this isn't a one-for-one comparison, and people will tell me I can't even think that way. But like, if you're giving up a third or a fourth, think of it this way: if and I know he costs more money, whatever, you only have one one year on the contract. Can't fit the comparison, but if he was sitting there in the third round this year, and you could use that pick to take him, you would just take him. So just take the risk for the pick. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it with teams. They, they, they seem to be really, really the, 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 too, the right? perfect yeah. example is my Cardinals. You trade Rondell Moore for Ritter, but you won't keep Rondell right. Moore and trade a six rounder conditional to a four. Or just yeah. say, you know what? Let's That's up odd. the ante. Let's up the ante and we'll offer a third rounder straight up. Non conditional, just third rounder. And here you go. Or, yeah, like I said. Hard. You offer the conditional second rounder, but give them a four. So yeah. you do the same thing, four, six, do a same thing, four conditional to a second if he plays 51% of the snaps, which he won't. You know, but if he did, the Cardinals would be saved by him. And it's just ridiculous, man. It's absolutely ludicrous. It, it makes no sense, and I don't care what anybody says. It's my, my phrase of the day, I guess. But um, All right, anything else, Travis? Um, you know, are we doing a dynasty show tonight or not? not sure. I hope I hope so. I, I, I think we will. Question, I, I, I think we will go I, on the dynasty. I'll wait channel. Till later. Any topic ideas for the uh, dynasty channel? Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll think about it. I had a couple of questions, so I'll read those tonight or whatever we do. All right, dynasty show. I'll write them down. All right, later, Travis. Appreciate I'll, you. Uh, all right, bye. Deuces later. Uh, thank you to all my super chatters. Perps dropping a nine ninety nine. Hedge dropping a two. Texan Swarm coming in with a, a, a two dollar or five dollar wad. Thank you, Texan Swarm, for that. And then let me see if I could find this uh, Nico Collins and Tank Dell leaked New Jersey photo. Uh, Tank 
Dell, Nico, Texans. Let's see if I can find this this uh, leaked photo of the New Jersey's and let me see leaked Texans jersey. Let's do it live. Do it live. Here we go. Woo! There's Tank Dell. You can't really see their jerseys there. Let me see if I can put it up on. Uh, I want to get the. I want to get a, a clear photo. Let's see here. Tank Dell. I don't know. I, I I'll just show it to you here. But th that's those are the new jerseys. You can't really see too much on this photo. But I just I didn't really care so much about the jerseys. You can't really see too much on the jerseys, to be honest. Um, just a little bit of the numbers. The numbers have like a sharper like uh, turn to them. But I, I mainly wanted to show you Tank Dell and Nico, just looking looking ready, looking ready to rumble. You know what I mean? That's all I really cared about. They look good. They look good. Um. I think that's all she wrote for tonight on the main channel. Unless news breaks, we'll be back. If Diggs gets traded, we'll be back. Let me check uh, Tweeter real quickly, a.k.a. X, and see if there's any more news that, that broke while we're live. I'm sure I would have heard about it from some of you, but let's let's go ahead and refresh. Kirk Cousins wearing the number 18. That's another report on that that we already have on screen. Eckler said Commander's pitch was to come in and be part of a two back two man backfield with Brian Robinson. That was the opportunity and environment I wanted to be in says Eckler. He wanted to be a a uh, a part of a running back by committee cuz he knows that he needs to go the route of the old. The ways of the old for him, receiver more than running back. That's where he did a lot of damage when he entered the league. Remember Eckler was a receiving running back, not a running running back. And when Melvin Gordon left, he took over the workhorse role entirely, and he did a great job. And Eckler deserves our praise because Eckler was a monster in fantasy football for so long. But for him to have any sort of success this year, he does need to probably revert back to his older ways of being more wide receiver than running back. And it might lead to a 10 touchdown, total touchdown season, and maybe a 1,100 total yards, 1,000 total yards and 10 touchdowns. It's possible. You know, and, and I don't I don't mind that at all. I think that's pretty good value. Uh, uh, Brian with a, a five dollar hauler says, "I think you took all of the top three defenses on one team last year. The idea made me smile. Did it work? Uh, later grade for Hollywood. Uh, letter I'm sorry, letter grade for Hollywood in KC. I'd say a B plus is a really good fit. Um, I like I like it. B plus for that. As far as that, I'll be honest with you. I ended up." Uh, I, I want to try it again. I don't think it was... I think it was execution that I messed up on. Because I sat the Dallas Cowboy defense, I think, one time where I shouldn't have. And they exploded. So I ended up screwing myself out of being locked into starting Dallas every week by having the, the options. But I want to try it again. I, I think I can master it. I think I could be more disciplined with it. Um, but, but I also handcuffed the other two defenses from other people having them but it, it was a small roster league and so I did run into a problem where I had to release one of the three and I, so I just rolled with the top two by midseason but I think it's still a very fun strategy I might run it back this year and do it in a in an expert league but the for anybody that doesn't know what he's talking about I drafted the top three defenses and I did it about three rounds too early and said screw the middle round like the middle to late round picks when were rounds 15 round 16 round 17 so i went i went dallas cowboys i went the second highest ranked defense i think it was who is it buffalo who is it i forget who it was and then i took took the third one back to back to back and they were all very you know good defenses they're scoring a little bit more than the average d right and so I, I, my plan was to rotate those and have the best scoring defense that anybody could possibly have um, I think I could still pull it off. It's a really intriguing strategy. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. There were so many people that absolutely hated it. They were so mad that I did it. It rubbed people the wrong way. I loved it. I'm going to try it again. It's a fantastically fun strategy to deploy. I just did it wrong. Um, but mostly because I don't have time. 
<laughs> so I'm barely, I'm barely setting lineups. I do so many leagues that are like, you know, expert leagues and, and promotional leagues and charity leagues. And, um, I, I just, I, I, I could become such a bad owner. Cause I'm my, my job is to update you guys, not to run, run all these leagues that don't mean anything that I have no money in them and stuff like that. So I, I sometimes I'm a horrible owner with some of these commitments. I'm like, can you do this celebrity league? Austin Eckler's in it. And so I'm like, I get to draft with Eckler. I'll do it. And I played in a league with Eckler for two years. I played in a league with Darren Waller. I played in a league with, uh, you know, some big, big, you know, NFL analysts and stuff and such. And I got a couple very, very exciting, one really, really exciting league that I might be joining or running, actually. And it could have some big names in it, but I don't know if it's going to fully work out, so I don't want to announce it yet. But uh, I'm also doing another league that I think Eckler is in that one. So we'll have to see. Maybe I'll draft Eckler in it. Maybe I can get him on the show. He was supposed to come on the show last year. And uh, ended up not. He was supposed to come on the show. Did not come on. Um, well, not yeah, last year, but like not too long ago. Uh, now we're on to next year. Appreciate you all being here. Brian, appreciate you. We'll see you all later. And uh, don't forget the Dynasty channel tonight. We're live Monday through Friday here on the main channel. Every single Monday through Friday. But we're also live on the Dynasty channel. I try and do a daily show. So tonight we're going to do it. YouTube.com slash Dynasty Fantasy Football. Don't forget my Rumble link. They're all in the description. I have Smitty Shows and all three of the links there. Make sure you're subscribed. And then I have other channels. If you just click on my channels on any one of my YouTube channels, you'll see the other two channels. But you can follow those. I'll see you all later. Appreciate you. Thank you, Perps, for the super chat. Thank you all for your support. We're climbing. We're, we're almost at 25K. We'll be at 25K probably by the end of the month. And I couldn't uh, be more gracious to every one of you that helped me do what I do. This is the best job in the world. And if I don't say thank you enough, I owe all of you a thank you, every single one of you. And I wouldn't be able to do this if you weren't here watching. So really, you guys make the show. I'll see you all later tonight on the Dynasty channel, youtube.com slash Dynasty Fantasy Football. I'll see you. Let me drop the link so you guys can actually click it and you don't have to go looking for it. Here's the Dynasty link. If you want to join us tonight, Dynasty Fantasy Football, here it is. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll be looking right now to make sure people are clicking this link and subscribing. We're going live tonight. I don't know what the topic will be, but we'll be back. Dynasty channel, do it live. Appreciate you. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message from the Bruce's mother. Get Bijan. Bijan. Hi, my name is Bijan Robinson. I like long walks on the beach. And, well, I also like scoring. Touchdown! Go be thankful for Tank Dell. Birdman says, don't forget to smash that like button on the way out the door. He is not wrong. Hit that thumb up button. Still 124 of you in here. We'll see you all tonight on the Dynasty channel. Deuces. People are getting burrowed left and right, and people are going to remember it.